What is up, everybody? I am Taylor. It's July 5th. It's the day after America Day. Freedom! Fireworks. Yeah, I didn't sleep much because of freedom and fireworks, and uh, it's been an annoying couple days. Somebody stole my catalytic converter I don't know, off my car, so neat. I love this country. Anything. Anyways, yeah. I was able to get to the comic shop, though, because it's literally across the street, so I'll walk there because I'm a bastion of health. And we're going to do this. It's a large stack of books this week. Worst to best. Yeah, let's just get into it. All right, worst, we have, well, least favorite. I'll, I'll be nice today, whatever. Weird Work, number one, by Jordan Thomas and Shady Kane. This is, it's a weird book. It's weird in the title. It's interesting looking. It's very verbose. Look at that. That's a lot of wordy words. It's like reading a novel with a few pictures. Uh, here's the thing. It's weird. But it feels like it's just weird for the sake of being weird. Like, he's got the opening thing, yeah. And then, like, it, it does eventually, like, kind of coalesce into some semblance of a plot and a direction. But by the time it does, which is about halfway through the book, you, you lost me. And it's really not that interesting, even when it does. It's kind of a boring-ass book. Like, uh, you get the excitement of the kind of weird imagery, which is cool. I appreciate Shady Kane's art, but, like, the story itself, it's not an interesting story. Uh, I mean, it, it's playing on these crime noir pastiches, and it's playing on these sci-fi and fantasy things. It just, it just doesn't didn't do it well enough to grip me. It, and so uh, I will not be continuing on with weird work. Uh, I do like the art. Like I said, it's a, it reminds me a bit of uh, Mike Allred, who I believe also did a, yeah, also did a variant cover on this. Um, I'm not familiar with anything by Jordan Thomas, and uh, I'm not in any hurry to hunt down any more of their stuff, because, I don't know, what's fine? It, it's, yeah, it probably is about fine, and maybe if you're in the mood for it, or if you want some wacky away from the norm stuff, it might do you, do you some good, but it just kind of wasn't my week for this shit, so whatever. Anyways, next, Doctor Strange, number five, Jen McKay, Pascal Ferry, and I'm done with this one, too. I, I, I tried. I liked the Wong issue last week. There was a little bit in here that had the hints of promise. It's the marriage of like some other Sorcerer Supreme from some other dimension. And I don't know. It's... I don't take it. I don't... I don't I, Pascal Ferry's art's got really thin line work and relies heavily on the colorist to do their diligence. And maybe, maybe Pascal's doing the, the coloring too. Whatever. Do I care... Artists, okay, so Pascal, nope, colors, Heather Moore, sorry. Heather Moore is doing a lot of the heavy lifting with the coloring. Um, and then the art itself is just kind of like very thin line works and, and not very dynamic. It doesn't really seem to fit the Doctor Strange story very well. Uh, and then the story, it's all right. I mean, honestly, it's not, it's it's fine. You get some of the supernatural, I mean, you get Dormammu. You get some, you get the, the like, Chebuka is hitting all the, ticking all the boxes, as far as what should be in a Doctor Strange book, but it's just not coming together and doing an interesting tale for me. I, I don't give a shit. Like, I just don't. I don't care what he's up to. I don't care about Clea. I tried reading the previous Clea miniseries. Didn't give a shit. Tried reading the Death of Doctor Strange. I didn't really care. And this is just another continuation of, like, I've been dragged on so long. It feels like, I mean, there's only five issues in on this one. But it feels like forever I've been reading this Doctor Strange shit, and it's, like, not gotten any more intrigued to me. Interesting to me. Words are hard. Other than uh, the, the one Wong issue. I'd much rather read a Wong book than a Strange book. So, give me your Wong. You're tired. You're huddled messes. You're to be free. All right, next. This might be a little weird because there's another one later in the pile, but it is what it is. So, DC Comics has this event thing that's going to give everybody a fucking headache, right? It's Night Terrors or Terror of Night. Yeah, Night Terrors. K-N-I-G-H-T. Get it? Because it can't just call it Night Terrors. N-I-G-H-T. That would just be normal. It's a DC event. It's like, it's going over the next two months and it's taken over every book. So like, you're in the middle of a plot. You're, you're like enjoying a DC comic and you're like, oh, hey, what the hell? I'll, 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 I'm finally liking Dawn of DC, Superman, the Dark Kent. Crisis on Your Mom, issue number 74. I can't wait to see what's next. Nope, everyone gets a two-month break while Josh Williamson does this Night Terrors bullshit. 
And this is the Batman one, one of the Batman ones. So it's going to be two hour issues of Batman, and it's Josh Williamson writing it and Mike March and Maury. So I can't remember who the first names are, and I don't really care. This is a direct continuation from the intro to the thing, which is Josh Williamson and Howard Porter. We're going to talk about that in a bit. And, uh, uh, hang on, artist, Guillaume, Guillaume Mart, Guillaume, yeah, okay, whatever. And, uh, this is a character called Insomnia, who's the big bad guy, which is also a stupid fucking name for a character. Although I have Insomnia, and it makes me cranky. So, it's just a cranky, but apparently this is some other thing. Anyways. If you were to describe Batman's horrors, or what would scare Batman, what would you come up with? And, and uh, first thing that comes to mind. But we got to be parents getting shot in the alley. It'd be Pearls. It'd be, what's his name? Freddy Fingers. And the guy's in it. What doesn't matter? All that's in here. It's all very tropey and all very done before. Now, there's a little bit of meta commentary where Josh Williams acknowledges it's been done before. But that doesn't make it any more interesting. It's just like a retread of all the shit Batman's been through. Or the one defining thing that Batman's been through to make him Batman. And it's just kind of... Uh, and then there's a backup story with Damian Wayne, Damon Wayne, whatever. That's also pretty fucking boring. Like, it's just a... Yeah, it's Batman fighting back against his own inner terrors. I swear to God, it's every fucking Batman book. Honestly, all of them. So I don't know why the hell they're making this. Uh, next. Um, another one that kind of pains me to have it this low, but it is what it is. Phantom Road number five. This is the end of volume one, I believe, which is Jeff Lemire and Gabriel Walta on the art. And Gabriel Walta's art is great. I love the weird grittiness, the kind of like 90s aesthetic to it, the weird big heads and the, and the strange characters. There's The problem is, is Jeff Lemire lately has been very slow developing his plots and his characters and his stories. Which makes it very difficult to read monthly. And this is one of those where it's a difficult monthly read because there's just not a lot that happens from month to month. This is the most packed issue of this book thus far, but it still doesn't coalesce. I'm using the word coalesce today. It's my word. Coalesce. I think it's twice I've used it, three times, into anything really coherent. You finally have a little bit of an idea, maybe, of what they're doing on the road, on this phantom road and the phantom somebody and phantom things with things chasing them, but it's still. Just relying on atmosphere and, and uh, this sense of dread to tell a story instead of actually just telling a story. And so uh, I'm, I'm sure it'll be interesting by the end. Like Sort of like Little Monsters was interesting by the end. But like I don't think I have it in me to keep up with all these monthlies that are coming out from, from Lemire if they're not interesting to me right off the bat. I know he's got another one coming out called Fish Flies. I'll read that. Uh, and I'll give it a shot, but like I'm not going to keep up with all these anymore. Like it's just too much and too slow. So I would say trade weight it, or read it digitally, or whatever. But I would not recommend writing reading these monthly. They're just not a great monthly read. And when I look back at it, a lot of the linear stuff I've read does read better collected. So maybe that's something. All right, next. Yeah, you're gonna put this one here. Steve Scroach, Scroachy, Scrocum, Scroke, and uh, yeah, it's basically a one-man show. Brian Valenza, I think, is on the colors. Clobbering Time, number five. This is the last issue of Clobbering Time. This is a thing book where a thing is teaming up with people to do things. Thing, things. Yeah, um, it's a fun, stupid book. <laughs> There's a big over-the-top villain. There's some great art in here by Steve Scroachy. It's, um, this final issue is still Steve, still sees... The thing teaming up with Dr. Doom and this Watcher who's not a Watcher. He got kicked out of Watchering school because he was no longer a Watcher and watched, wanted to fight back and do fighty-backy things instead of watchy things. I can't remember the character's name. And they're fighting against the Psycho Pomp. I don't know, which I think is an established villain, but kind of a low-level super one, a stupid one. It's a villain from the future that blames superheroes, so he comes back to the past to fuck with everybody. That's been the sort of thread that has tied this whole series together, and that's this. And it does have a satisfying enough ending. It's not fantastic. I do think the first three issues of this were really good fun. I think the last issue was decent, and I think this one is also decent, but not amazing. You get the art and the bombastic nature of that, and that's great. Like, the, the art is, if you like Gary Frank's kind of stuff, or like the really heavily detailed stuff, you're really going to like this. If you're a fan of the thing, you're probably gonna, really going to like this. 
But it's just, uh, did it stick to landing? Ish. I mean, ish. Uh, it, it, you can tell Steve's having fun with it. And it, it is a fun book. It's just kind of, when it came to the actual ending, I wish it was just a little bit crazier. So, there we go. Next, we have The Adventures of Ben John Cad, number five. Remember where I, anyways. DC titles, they're stupid. I mean, not the actual, the name, look at this. Benches of Superman, John Kent, Dawn of DC. This is Dawn of DC, which is getting interrupted by the Night of DC, or Night of Terrors, whatever, Night Reigns, Night, whatever the fuck. Um, this is John Kent in un Injustice World doing injustice-y things. I've not read all of Injustice, so I don't know all of it, and you might be a little lost in here if you've not. Like, I was a little bit confused, but this is issue five, I believe, of six. Uh, and, like, it's an alternate universe, which I'm also, everyone's kind of sick of, I think, too. But it's, you know, where Superman had tragic things happen to him and became bitter and hardened instead of the kind, like, kind and loving Superman. And so Batman, everyone's fighting Superman. That's the premise, the injustice. Um, it does, they kind of do rehash this in here. And then they kind of set up for an ending. But that's this issue. It's a setup issue. Um, the art by... John Henry, Taylor Henry, Leroy Henry, Henry Henry, Hank Henry. Where the fuck is the title page in this one so I can tell you the title? Uh, nope, Tom Riley. Okay, I don't care. The art by Henry. It's it's that sort of new DC. It seems like a DC house style. Like, again, thin lines, not a lot of, like, expressive inking, and just kind of uh, flat. I like it. it like it, Bruno Redondo, I think, does it the best of ever, anybody at DC right now. But this is solid. Um, and yeah, the, the thing is, is, this issue is really just a setup for the finale. Is it bad? No. Is it amazing? No. Has there been better issues of it? Yes. Is it still a decent, solid issue? Definitely. Tom Taylor still knows how to tell a story, and he's kind of at his best when he's playing around in these other universes or universe I. What's the plural of universes? Does the universe doesn't matter? Um, Clayton Henry. Well, pro people. Uh, yeah, it's, it's solid, but it, it's like you're, it's going to rely on the next issue to see if it sticks it. And I believe, unfortunately, that could be two months from now. I hope they're not doing that to all this shit. I hope they're actually going to wrap this up concurrently or, like, do something. But I got a feeling they're going to push it all off. And then you guys come back to this, and, like, two months later, I'll be like, what the fuck happened? Fucking DC, you goddamn drive me nuts. All right, next. Speaking of drive me nuts and night terrors, we have Night Terrors First Blood. I am not going to read all the Night Terrors shit. I, I don't have it in me. I... Can't bring myself to care. Uh, but I wanted to check out this first issue. And it's solid. It's hard parter in the art. And the, the art is like nice and sketchy and not in DC's house style. Reminds me much more of like the horror stuff that they used to put out. And this is Josh Williamson. And this is the explainy-ish book of what's sort of going on. And it's got Dead Man. It's got one of my favorite characters. So I'm a sucker for, for the Dead Man character. And then I'm a sucker for like, I really do like hard parter art and the horror element of it. I do think that's doing a lot of like heavy lifting in here um the story itself yeah there's a big person thingy haunting nightmares and causing nightmares looking for a thingy that's the setup for the event i could go into more specifics but if you're going to read it i don't want to give it a ton of spoilers um but yeah it's you know it's decent in that regard i think that you could probably be fine skipping most of the night terror shit i don't think it's going to have Long lasting ramifications. I could be wrong. If I am, you can be like Taylor, you're wrong, you son of a bitch. And I'll be like, yes, you're right, I was wrong. I'm always wrong. Why do you watch me? I don't know. Why do you? Anyways, it could it it's not. I don't know. Like I I love the art on this a lot. And like the, I do think it the if they were just to tell a four or five issue story and, and make it a decent little concise little non event, it could be really fun. I, my problem is, is they're gonna stretch this shit out way too far. And, uh, you know, that's that's the biggest thing. Also, like, I think the color on this is uh, who's Anderson. In places, it's great, but in places like this where it just gets a little too primary, I get it, Superman's a primary colored character, but it's just kind of, the color gets a little on the nose. On some pages. But then you have these, like, initial, like, the autumn page here, I really like. And, and yeah, it's Brad Anderson on the color. Anyways, um, yeah, it's, I've, I've read a lot worse event setups. We'll see how it goes at the ending. I'll see at the end of it. I, there might be one or two issues I'm going to pick up in, in here, depending upon who the writing and the artist team is, but I'm not getting all of them. So, 
All right, things that are about to wrap up, and I've just taken a long time to do it. Daredevil, more like Swear Devil. This is the issue number 13 of the rebooted Zdarsky and Daredevil and Chachado uh, run. This is getting towards the end. It's Daredevil in Hell doing Daredevil in Hell things. It's the Chachado's art is great. Um, there is a lot of fun, cool stuff. I mean, you could probably take verbatim what I said for the uh, for the, for the Night Terrors first blood and go with it for the art. I mean, the art is like kind of sketchy, kind of horror, horrific, kind of over the top. I kind of hate it when they paste ads like this next to these giant great pages, but it is what it is. Um, and the, the story itself, it's, it's heading towards an ending. Um, they're letting Zdarsky take his time with it, which is fine. And like you, you, you're really kind of going back into Matt's, Matthew Murdoch's soul and what makes him tick. And what makes him take his faith? You gotta have faith, woo. But I mean, there's some cool stuff. Look, he's in a white uniform because he's got faith. Um, yeah, it's fine. It'll it, this it, it'll depend upon how it sticks to landing. Um, I'm optimistic that Zdarsky is going to land it well. Thus far, the past couple issues have been pretty fantastic. Last issue was better than this issue, but this is still a very solid issue, um, and I'm looking forward to, to the end of it. I think the end of it's coming next month. Well, maybe two months, depending on how the how the timeline is. So there might be either issue number fourteen or issue number four, fifteen. Or it's going to be it for the Zdarsky run, and I'm looking forward. Yeah, like I said, I'm looking forward to seeing how that all wraps up. And thus far, it's been great. So next issue. So, anyways, that's a solid one. All right, and one of the more fun books I've read thus far in the in a, in recent memory has been Peacemaker Tries Hard, and this is no different. This is Peacemaker Tried issue number three. Kyle starts writing it. Um, who the hell's in the art? Pew. Stephen Pew? Steve Pew, yeah. And Dirty Billy on the Calling. All right. So this is your not your new movie. This is, or no, this is not your comic book version of Peacemaker. This is the TV and movie version. And it's fun. I mean, it's like capturing the John Cena. Sometimes the art really manages to stick it and so you really see the Cena in the art. Sometimes not. But it's just like the big, dumb, dopey peacemaker. That's this. And like issues one and two have been great. This is a little bit of a dip down, but it's still a funny fucking book. At this point in, I would probably wait. I think there's only one more left, and you could probably get it to rate collected at the end of it all. It's not going to be a you know first appearance, although there's a first appearance of Bruce Wayne, which is a dog. <laughs> not, not actual. And then there's a, like an appearance of another character who may be the first appearance. But, you know, yeah, so if you're, if you're into French Bulldogs, big, dumb, stupid Peacemaker, and you like the Peacemaker show, I would really recommend this, because you get all that in here. You get some really stupidness. You get some, actually, some pretty decent action, too. And, uh, yeah, like, it, it, it does really seem to capture that nice blend of, of, the, of the movie and TV version, where, like, Peacemaker's an asshole, but he's not incompetent in what he does. He's just an idiot and everything else, and that's kind of this. And so if you're into that... I think Starks has nailed it on the head with the writing. So, there we are. And then, we have the last issue of Hairball by Matt Kent and Tyler Jenkins. And this is like a horrific cat from hell story. Um, that, and these guys have paired up before. And like, you're, you have to either like Tyler Jenkins' sketchy, kind of stoic and staid art and flat-ish colors and like the sort of impressionistic uh, characters, or you're not, it's not going to work for you. Uh, as far as the story goes, it, it, it does wrap up. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if there's volume two down the line, but this is the end of the first, at least first arc of Hairball, and Hairball does tell the story of a murder cat, and that's kind of it. Uh, and it, like this lady now has been trying, trying to track down murder cat and get rid of murder cat, and this is what happens in this when that lady chases. Sorry, I'm losing all my words today. But yeah, it's a good solid ending. Um, I do think, like, I, I might be wrong. I have not done the past issues, but I think this one's printed on different paper. And like, it, the colors seem to pop more than I remember from the other previous issues. And it's like a sort of thicker stock. So I could be wrong. But like, it just feels like it's on a different, like, I, I swear the other ones were on like coated stock. And this is an uncoated interior paper. Uh, but I'm digging it. I think it was a good, nice, effective way to end this story. And, and like, it left it open for continuation, but it also did a really nice job of wrapping it up. So that, that's Hairball. If you like evil, I think cats are evil. 
You should probably read it. Trade weight it, like everything else I've been saying today. And then, we're getting there, people. We have W. Maxwell Prince and Martin Simmons' Swan Songs. W. Maxwell Prince was the probably best known for Ice Cream Man. Martin Simmons for Department of Truth. So you get the Martin Simmons... Creepy, atmospheric, super painterly, which I still think is a lot of it's digital. Yeah. Um, heavy, heavy art. And I don't mean emotionally. I just mean physic, like just weighty looking. Like there's not like a sketchy like lightness to this. This is just a meaty book from start to finish in the, in the, art, in the art department. Uh, then you get... You get W. Maxwell Prince telling a Maxwell, W. Maxwell Prince type story. Swan Songs is a book of endings or the things like going out. And that, that's this. It, I think there's going to be a different artist every issue. I don't know how many there's going to be. It's a image book. It is printed on coated stock, so you do get the colors popping in a, in a different way. You get the sheen on it. And uh, if you like Ice Cream Man and you like Department of Truth, or if you like just a part of the truth, and you but you want a different writer than James Tynan, and you want something that kind of wraps up the story with one and done, or or you like want like the like a one and done kind of like melancholy, sad tale with a little bit of hope mixed in just to really mess with you, get Swan Sons. I mean, W. Maxwell Prince, I think, is an amazing writer, and I think he's really coming into his own as in like the comics medium. Ice Cream Man, I think, has been fantastic every issue I've read, and this is not any different. It's just a different artist on it. So you get the, the sort of like sienkiewicz uh art of Simmons paired up with the, the, the kind of, yeah, the sadness of Prince. And it works very well. I'm a fan. I dig it. And there we go. And then the last book, which I think was a comicsology book first. Uh, I believe so. And I was not expecting this to be this high on the list. But I, I liked it enough that I'm thinking I'm calling it my favorite book of the week. It is a Swan Songs, issue number one, or no, no, not Swan Songs, Jesus Christ, sorry. Barnstormers, issue number one, by Scott Snyder and Tula Lotte. Uh, it's a story of a hotshot pilot, uh, Barnstormer, as it were, and uh, the hijinks he gets on when he crashes his plane in a place he's not supposed to, and a strange damsel is somewhat in distress comes along, and then they have an adventure. It, 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 it's 1920s, 30s-ish. It feels like that. And mixed with some, like, sci-fi horror elements. The art by Latte is fantastic. Not as heavy as, like, the Martin Simmons, but still very painterly throughout. And the story, it's a fun story. Like, it, it's a legit, like, intriguing enough story where you, like, start to, like, question the, the reliability of the narrator. And, uh, but, and, and even if you don't get to things on that level... You still are like, you can still enjoy it on the surface of like a good old, like adventure rock. And look, there's underwear and ladies. So, um, yeah, it's been, it, it, and it, for five bucks, you get two basically issues of one. So, I mean, it's, you know, it's a thick boy book. So, it, and again, coded stock again. And I say it's well kind of worth it. It's like they're, when they're printing out these comicsology originals, I'm down for at least checking them out because like I like Clear, which is the old one from uh, Scott Snyder and uh, Francis Manifold. Uh, that last one, and I really, I like this better, I think. I think Barnstormers is better, and I think it's, yeah, if you like period adventure comics especially, or period adventure stories, sort of in the vein of a, uh, not quite, not not quite as like over-the-top serial nature as like an Indiana Jones type adventure, but that 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 vein, I, I think you should probably pick this one up, or maybe trade weighted if they do collect it, but I mean, for two, two issues for five bucks, Barnstormers is my book of the week, so... There you have it. Lots of crap. Well, not lots of crap, just lots of whatever. Lots of me being tired. <laughs> I'm sorry if I'm not low energy today. It's been, like I said, it's been a long couple of days dealing with all my car bullshit and like insurance companies and catalytic converters and don't be a dick and steal other people's crap off their cars. <sighs> all right, that's all I got. I'm going to leave you. See ya.